Good morning, fish heads. It is Thursday. It's almost the weekend. Jen Crevasse, Jekyll Bates, and we've got an exciting, I think, update for you guys. It may not be a long one, but we've got some really cool pieces, and I have been having a blast learning. And, and it seems like, I think with, with anything, whether it's a craft or a career or the line of interest that, that you want to pursue because you're curious about it, the level of skill will always go up and then reach a plateau and go up and reach a plateau. Um, and then if you're lucky, it goes up again. So I've been having a lot of fun just learning how to interpret patterns and blend colors this week for pieces for customers. And I've been getting some challenges, stuff that I normally don't do, a little out of the box stuff. Somebody um, asked me to come up with my best bluegill for him. So I did that. We're gonna start out the show with this piece. Now I'm also gonna put in, um, as we go through this, I'm gonna put in some pictures of what my reference photos are. And I found a couple of really good ones this past weekend. And one of them is out of Missouri, which is one state north of me. That's where Pumpkin Bait Company is. Um, the Missouri Department of Conservation online has a ton, a ton, a ton of reference photographs. They have a field guide. So it's under their Discover Nature portion of their website. And there's a fishes, there's freshwater fishes. So I'm gonna link both of the uh, websites that I found below for you guys so check that out it's going to be in the description when you go through if you're on your smartphone just click on description or see more underneath the video if you're on a laptop you can do the same thing and they're really really good references as you can see in the picture it's the fish in a very dark background and that's the way it is for most of it the other one that i found that i really like is an encyclopedia of Arkansas, which also has quite a bit of forage and invertebrates, a lot more insects, reptiles, uh, also has some fish, and I really like their sculpt and reference photos. So I'm gonna link both of those below for you guys, but this is one of two pieces that I did on the bluegill, and you guys can see this reference photo really 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 happy and i think you're going to see this pattern on some stuff later on this year matter of fact i'm 100 percent certain that you will this is the other one and this is on that pre-foil dinger pressing which is really cool because you can see that iridescence and that that um, foil shine underneath the pattern but new bluegill pattern it's going to be limited to just a couple of things this fall, so be on the lookout for it. We're not done with this pattern. Next up, I've got three cool little baits that are going out to Texas. And that would be these three right here. We've got two farm pond crappies and a wild crappie. Those will be fun to fish. I have two River to Sea S waiver. These are the 168 size. And when you, most of the time, when you look at lures and you see numbers and stuff, 168 is the millimeter length that it is. So if you were to put this on a ruler that shows you centimeters, it's going to be almost 17 centimeters. 168 millimeters or 16.8 centimeters and that's where the references are this is in yellow bass and we'll give you guys a little bit more of a close-up on this the stencils that you're seeing are from brian over at anarchy stencils and uh, anarchy model is the name and that is one of the common reference points you can get um, references from brian from russ all of all of the links for most of the stuff that I use is available underneath the description right here in every single video. So this is yellow bass. These are going uh, again to Justin Brewer. He's a Tupelo guy and yellow bass uh, actually in Mississippi 
is part of the second. The, there's in scientific names, there's a first and then there's a second. So this is Mississippi is actually part of the yellow bass's second scientific name. So go look that up and you'll see what I'm talking about. So some cool stenciling up here. And then I did a peacock bass for him. And there is the peacock bass. I did it a little bit darker. Now, as far as I know, there are no peacock bass in Mississippi, but the colors are phenomenal. This is, this is something that I would throw all through the fall. It could also kind of mimic a yellow perch, but it absolutely is a great color to throw. Three, maybe even all four seasons. There is that with that signature spot on the tail. This is a three bar peacock. This is a almost grown, I would say teenage, about, this, about the color it would be. So the Mayan cichlids, which is what this is representing for Mike Jensen, um, this is a little bit lighter than um, it would be if it's a full-grown adult. The adults are red, almost really dark red. Now there are some reds in this bait, but only underneath, and you guys can watch this start to finish. And you guys can see the, the full send, the start to finish on this video if you, uh, if you look in the last spray session playlist. I think we're almost at 100 spray sessions for the channel. And I know that uh, we're approaching 650 videos total. So it's quite an accomplishment. I try not to give content unless I feel that it's good content. I've been trying to up my production here lately, give you guys a little bit more content because you definitely seem to like it. And if I have a good routine and schedule, I can certainly fit that in for you guys. So uploading three, four, sometimes five times a week. I do take a couple of days off just to give it a rest and get the orders fulfilled. But this is a juvenile mind sick. And, and the other thing about this is that this is the colors that I've found on just about every bait of this that I could find that was this size in real life. So if I have reference photos and you can see the person's hand in the photograph, just about all of them at this size are this color. And they're just starting to trend into a little bit more of their reds, which is why I've got a little bit of extra red on the, well, actually the reference photo showed this as well, but that's that. And then last but certainly not least, and again from Missouri Department of Conservation was the reference photo that I got for Andrew Dubay. And uh, this was the fish that he sent along. And this is the completed war mouth that I came up with. He said, take a stab at it, see what you can do with it. And you can see it's got, um, it's got one, two, three, four areas that are blocked out. Bring this over just a little bit better. And then the green, and we were able to get the, uh, the fins. And yep, this is KBS. Clear as water. Clear as gen clear water, let's say that. But Andrew, there is your worm mouth, and that is what I've got for you guys today. Um, just a quick tip and trick on the bottom of these. Most of these, as is true on these bullgills and the bullshad family of baits, um, have independent moving eyelets on the bottoms so that the hooks can free swing. One of the essential things to making sure that that stays like that is to brush on your clear coat or epoxy, whatever it is that you guys use. Brush it on. Don't dip these baits. It's just, it's a, maybe takes you five more minutes, but it's worth it. And you'll present a much cleaner bait 
to your customers. That is all the news is fit to print. Thanks for hanging out with me. I hope I was able to teach you a couple of things and show you some cool stuff. Maybe give you some ideas of your own. You guys have a fantastic rest of your day and I will see you on the next video. Cheers and happy casting from Jekyll Bates.